Hi there, it's Amy from Cakes With Faces. Now recently there's been even more news about things closing around Tokyo, which is making us all very sad. So I thought it would be more positive to focus on what new things have opened up. Now if you're a subscriber, you'll know I made a video like this a few months ago, but since then there's been even more new things that I wanted to show you. We've got some good stuff coming up. There's a kawaii exhibition, a cute place to stay, Gundams and a lot of bubble wrap. There's new Japan videos on my channel every other Thursday if you want to subscribe. Now there have been several big closures announced in Tokyo recently, including Tokyu Hands in Ikebukuro has just closed. That leaves a really big gap, literally, because it was such a huge shop at the entrance to Sunshine City. Although the other branches of Tokyu Hands around Tokyo are still open. Several games arcades have closed down and there's some big changes coming up to Adaiba. And it is worth remembering that some of these changes are because of leases finishing on buildings and redevelopments, so it's not always necessarily because the businesses are struggling. And I try not to get too down about these changes because changes happen, you can't expect anywhere to stay the same forever. But what really got me this week was news of one of my favourite shops in Harajuku closing, Listen Flavour. I love their designs, I've got several of their items. They were just off Takeshita Street. They are continuing as an online shop, but going to their shop was one of the things I really look forward to about going to Harajuku, so I am sad about this one. And just to mention about my Japan travel guidebook, when I was writing it, I tried really hard to make sure it wouldn't go out of date too quickly. So any changes to the information in the book are all on a web page for you. There's a link to it inside the book. And I did update it very slightly this year. If you've already got the book, there's no point buying it again because the changes are quite minor. But if you order it now, you'll get the 2021 version and the links in the description. So on to what's new and what's opened up in Japan. This first one I'm very excited about. It's a Sanrio exhibition in Roppongi. It's about the beginning of kawaii, which I think is so interesting. I'd love to know more about how cuteness became part of the culture and why you see cute characters everywhere on signs and to make things more friendly. And I'd love to know how that started. And this exhibition is all about the roots of kawaii. On the website, it says kawaii culture started from strawberries. So there you go. What more do you need to know? As well as Sanrio characters, the exhibition also has works by Sebastian Masuda, who started Harajuku brand 6% Doki Doki. And in Tokyo, it's also at Roppongi City View, so you can see a view of the city as well. When I first discovered this, I got a bit too excited and got a bit mixed up with the UK and American dates. So I thought it continued until October 2022, but it's not the 1st of October, it's actually the 10th of January. So it's pretty unlikely we'll be able to see it in Tokyo. But it does say the exhibition is going to be touring, so there's a chance we might be able to catch it. On samriocharactermuseum.com, it says Niigata, Fukuoka, Miyazaki, etc. will be held. So keep an eye on that and keep those fingers crossed. Next, and also in the kawaii category, we've got a new cute cafe in Harajuku called Candy Syrup. Now, I thought I recognised the name and there was actually an idol group and a hairdressing salon and shop with the same name by the same people. Their music is sort of a mix of J-pop and rock and metal. They're, some of their songs are a little bit baby metal-ish. You can listen to them on Spotify and on YouTube. Anyway, now they're opening a cafe in Harajuku. It looks really pink, neon and cute. All the staff are dressed in pastel and gothic Lolita style outfits. It just opened last week, so there's not too much information about it yet. I couldn't find a menu, but I did find a few pictures on Twitter. It seems like they've got their own brand of champagne. In Japanese, they call it Orishan, which I think is one of those hyphenated words. Original champagne, Orishan, I guess. Amongst other things, they seem to serve strong zeros. And there's this cute strawberry dessert in a teacup. I wasn't sure if it's more a bar, a cafe, or even a made cafe, but it does look interesting. There's been several designers working on the whole look, so it looks like something new that really is authentic Harajuku culture. Next, we've got a new shop and restaurant in Ginza. I wanted to mention this one, not because it looks like a particularly interesting place to go, but because of the name. It's called Ginza, in it. 
It sounds kind of funny in English as a name for a shop or a restaurant, especially when you consider that Ginza is quite an upmarket area of Tokyo with lots of expensive designer shops. It's Ginza, innit? And it turns out that is what it's based on. It's based on the abbreviation of isn't it, which must have a different sound in Japanese. The restaurant itself looks nice enough and the shop upstairs sells garden furniture. It's Ginza, innit? Next, Team Lab, the team behind the Digital Art Museum in Tokyo, has opened a vegan ramen restaurant at Team Lab Planets. Team Lab Planets is the temporary exhibition where you can walk through water with projection mapping on the surface, and that's now open until the end of 2022. I hope I can go. They've opened a vegan ramen restaurant inside, so you can enjoy your ramen while you're immersed in the music, the projections, and all the atmosphere of the exhibition. I made a video about Team Lab Borderless, and I definitely recommend any Team Lab exhibition to anyone. It's a really unique experience. And the ramen looks really good. There's spicy miso ramen, soy sauce ramen, and some unusual options like green tea ramen, and this cold ramen covered in flowers. They also have some unusual flavors of ice cream. There's white ginger lily, pink rhubarb, and mint cucumber. Sounds refreshing. That's opening this week, along with a new flower shop, which matches the new garden rooms at Team Lab Planets. Team Lab also have a vegan ramen restaurant in Kyoto. It's pretty small with just 16 seats and it has moving projections of Japanese calligraphy. Now, shops and restaurants aren't the only new things in Tokyo, there's also some new toilets. The Tokyo Toilet Project has been replacing public toilets around Shibuya. There's 17 in total, each by a different designer. This one's made of planks of wood, and then there's this dome where everything is voice activated so you don't have to touch anything. To activate it, you say, hi toilet. It understands Japanese and English, so you could use it to practice your Japanese. This one you might have heard of, there's been quite a few videos about it. The walls are transparent and they turn opaque when you lock the door. There's a map of where you can find all the new toilets, so if you happen to be at a loss for things to do on your trip, you could do a self-guided tour of all of them, with lots of drinks in between so you can fully experience them all. Next is something we probably won't be able to try, but I wanted to show it to you anyway. It's the Halloween menu at IKEA Japan. I made a video once before about all the cute Halloween things I spotted in Japan in October. There was a lot, and especially a lot of cute themed snacks. And IKEA Japan has jumped in on the trend with a special Halloween menu. There's some pretty interesting options. There's black pancakes with a bat cookie and an eyeball that's made of meringue. There's black sesame pudding, sesame flavor, my favorite, with a cat's eye. There's ice cream with a spooky finger-shaped biscuit and purple sweet potato ice cream in a black cone. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure IKEA in the UK doesn't have anything like this. And if you like my dress, it's my special edition design for Halloween and it's made of velvet. You can get it from cakeswithfaces.co.uk. Next, manhole cover news. Now, lots of people are fans of Japanese manhole covers, which sometimes have interesting decorative designs. Drain spotting is definitely a thing where people take pictures of all the different designs they can spot. And I think it's good they've taken something ugly and functional and turned it into something creative. And now there's some new Pokemon designs. They're called Pokefuta, which is short for Pokemon lids. In Tokyo, they installed some in a park last summer. They're in Machida, which is slightly outside central Tokyo, so you do need to make a special trip to go to it. Although there is also a squirrel garden in Machida, which I kind of want to go to, and a Snoopy museum, and a Shaun the Sheep theme cafe. But if you don't think that's worth a 40 minute train ride, there are now some more centrally located ones in Ueno. The first Pokemon manhole covers in Japan were installed in 2019, and now there's over 200 of them all around Japan. This map shows you where they all are, so if you're a Pokemon fan, you can hunt them down and catch them all. There's also some new Gundam manhole covers. They're in Odawara, which is just southwest of Tokyo, near the Mount Fuji area. It's a stop on the Shinkansen line between Tokyo and Kyoto and Osaka. Odawara is known for its castle, which features in the design. 
They were installed this summer as part of the Gundam Manhole Project, that is the official name. They're hoping to install more in different places around Japan. They started with Odawara because it's the hometown of the original creator of Gundam. And more Gundam news, Japan's largest Gundam is currently being built in Fukuoka. It's going to be ready in spring 2022. It'll be at a new shopping centre called La La Port. Probably not how you say it. La La Port. La La Port. It's going to be 20 metres tall, which is 30 centimetres taller than the one in a diver in Tokyo. There's also going to be a mini museum and, of course, a merch shop. If you're thinking of visiting Fukuoka or Kyushu, I definitely recommend it. I've got a whole playlist of videos on my channel about things to do there. There's so many interesting places. Next, the first section of Tokyo Torch is now open. It's going to be the tallest building in Japan. The design's inspired by the Olympic torch. When it's finished, it'll be 390 metres tall. Now, the Tokyo Sky Tree is 634 metres tall, but that's not classified as a building. It's a structure or a tower because it's not habitable. Although, I think you probably could live in it if you were allowed. So, Tokyo Sky Tree, tallest tower, Tokyo Torch, tallest building. The first section's open now, called Tokyo Torch Terrace. It's got cafes and restaurants. It doesn't look like anything particularly amazing, but if you're in the area, you might want to stop by and see how the building works going and take some pictures before it's finished. The whole building isn't going to be done until 2027. There's also going to be a new shopping centre in Harajuku, opening in 2022. It's on that big crossroads with Tokyo Plaza, which is that shopping center with the stunning entrance with all the mirrors. This one is also going to be decorated with a lot of mirrors. It's going to be diagonally opposite Tokyo Plaza. So basically the whole crossroads is going to look like a hall of mirrors. It'll also have a roof garden split over several levels, which looks like a really nice spot. Also in Harajuku, there's a new room at the Moshi Moshi Rooms, which is a really cute, quirky place to stay. It's run by the same company that ran the Moshi Moshi Box, which is where the really colourful Harajuku clock used to be. Basically, they have themed rooms that you can book through Airbnb. The theme of the new room is Harajuku Kawaii. It's really colourful with quirky animal ornaments and plants, and it looks like a really fun place to stay. They have three other rooms as well, all with different themes. There's the origami room. It's traditional Japanese with a modern twist. There's parasols, lanterns and traditional patterns. A sumo and sento room which is sumo and bathhouse themed. It's got this strange light that looks like a big hand. And the Sakura Cherry Blossom Room, which is pink, fluffy and cosy. They're in the back streets of Harajuku, so if you want to be completely immersed in kawaii, this is the place to stay. As you'd expect for somewhere non-standard and custom, it is quite expensive, so it might be a place to stay just for one night or for a special occasion. Also in Harajuku, there's some new things along the main shopping street, Takeshita Street. There's a new puppy cafe called Dog Cafe Rio. This is actually in the shop where Drug Honey used to be, which was a really black, gothic fashion brand. So it looks like it's been completely transformed into a very kawaii puppy cafe where you can have a drink or you play with small dogs. They've got a lot of different kinds. There's also a shop that does food with strawberries and bamboo charcoal, so a lot of it is black. It's like the opposite to all the rainbow snacks in Harajuku, like that rainbow cheese toasty I tried. There's black popcorn, black noodles, black bread, and black strawberry daifuku, which is a traditional sweet with a strawberry, mochi, and red bean paste. So there are lots of new things opening up, but I do hope Harajuku keeps its alternative fashion roots and doesn't just become filled with novelty snacks. And finally, for families, a play museum opened up in Tachikawa last year. It's not really a museum, it's more an interactive centre with all sorts of things for kids to play on. At the moment, there's a section with loads of bubble wrap. It's in all sorts of different giant shapes and it's just there to have fun with. Sadly, only under 12s are allowed. It looks kind of fun and satisfying, but that is a lot of plastic. I am kind of cringing at how much single-use plastic there is there. I wonder how often they have to replace it when it all gets popped. 
So there's a few new and interesting things in Japan. Tell me what you thought in the comments. I know you all can't wait to go there and as soon as I hear any news about when Japan's reopening for tourism I will be sure to share it here in the community tab on my channel and on Twitter and Instagram as Cakes With Faces and anywhere else I can. So I'll see you not next week but the week after on Thursday. Bye bye!